Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top new features inside of GIMP 3. Hi guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com and in this video, we're going to be using the preview version of GIMP 3 uh, to review some of the new features, including the paint select tool, improvements to performance, a canvas size command, multiple layer management, plugin management, and anything else that I can remember to throw in to this video. Now, GIMP 3, when it comes out, is going to have a ton of features, and I've already started looking at some of the new features or some of the new functionality uh, in the new menus that are available in the software using the latest preview version. In this video, I'm going to do kind of a roundup of some of the new features and just giving you what I think some of the positives and maybe even some of the negatives that might be involved with the new software. So we're going to start off at the GIMP, the GIMP roadmap website. Here we've got a list of the things that the development team are working on. And if you look at these, the status of all these things are work in progress. So nothing has been completed yet. And that kind of indicates that it may be a bit of time before the new version finally lands. But the first thing they're trying to do is to port the project GTK3. GTK3 is the software that is used to basically manage the canvas and to show the work that you're working on uh, on your display. So GIMP has been somewhat behind other software and with the advent of GTK3 or with the advent of the port to GTK3, what will happen is that GIMP will be on the same kind of level as software like Critter, which currently uses GTK3. And that should mean better performance, uh, a smoother experience when working inside of GIMP. They also talk about the space invasion. This is uh, an improvement in the color management to GIMP. Now, this is an important one because once the space invasion is complete, GIMP will be able to support CMYK natively. My fear with this one is that it might hold back the arrival of GIMP uh, 3 because I th I'm not sure exactly how much work there is left to be done with the space invasion. Uh, another new feature is the multiple layer selection and extensions management. And let's go ahead and take a look at those features. So I'm working here with a document that is multiple layers, but we can select more than one layer and move more than one layer around. That's something we couldn't do before. And um, it's something which you can obviously do inside of Photoshop. And it makes life a lot easier when you're managing uh, multiple layers. Another new feature which they're talking about is the extension management, which we find under edit manage extensions. And extensions are basically going to be things like plugins. Uh, I think they're also talking about themes as well as being potentially uh, a type of extension. So you'll have different mm, official demo plugins. Uh, installation extensions. You'll be able to manage the the, the, the the installations here. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I don't know how this is going to work inside of Windows. I imagine you'll be able inside of Linux to go to one of the repositories for uh, plugins and you'll be able to just download them and install them. Now, because uh, we're looking at the positive and the negative, this should make it easier to find and install uh, extensions. That's the positive. The negative is that you can sometimes get you can you can get software instability when the uh, software has a high number of uh, plugins that are installed. And I find certainly with Photoshop, which has got very good extension uh, support, it can become very very unstable if you have a lot of extensions uh, installed. It takes a lot of, lot of time to load up when you when you first open it. That kind of thing. There are disadvantages but I can definitely see this as a major advantage uh, inside of GIMP 3. I'm going to be inside of the view menu. If we go and look at some of the display filters, I think I did mention before that we've got things like the ACES uh, RRT filter. They're going to be coming in with GIMP 3. Uh, and some of these are already there with GIMP 
2.0. So if we get rid of this guy here, uh, we've got color deficient vision. This is already there inside of GIMP and you can choose to see what your image would look like uh, in different situations where you're simulating color blindness. And this is really useful, not so much for images like this, but when you're designing posters or anything that has infographics in it, it allows you to see what it's going to look like to a person who's colorblind. The improvements to the uh, canvas size command. So if we go to the canvas size command, this command allows you to change the size of the canvas. So we might say, okay, we want this image. We don't need all, all, all the width. So we're going to reduce the width to a thousand. Why not? Now we're going to have to decide, um, we're going to have to decide what part of the image is going to remain visible. That's cool. And we can then hit resize. And what will happen is that some of the document will be outside uh, of the canvas. However, in the past, that was pretty much all you could do. In, in future, they have an option for templates. So you'll be able to choose a template. So for instance, 1920 by 1080 uh, or, or UHD. This is a really useful feature if you need to resize the document so that it fits a particular use case. So for instance, if I was working on a thumbnail for YouTube, that has to be 1920 by 1080. It will make it much, much easier to select the correct size. And once we've actually selected the correct size, we can then work on the document like this. And because the canvas command is basically not destructive, if we go to canvas size and resize it back to the original size, we haven't actually lost anything that we uh, cut out before. So that's one of the new features. I like that new feature. Uh, obviously it doesn't work in, in my version of GIMP, but uh, once GIMP 3.0 comes, we should have that as an active feature inside of GIMP. A couple of new features, which I should quickly mention. This is the number one, the paint select tool. This is a tool that allows you to select parts of an image using a tool that works intelligently to figure out what parts of the design to select and what parts of the design to not select. So it's a bit similar to the foreground select tool, but it works uh, with kind of graphics, you know, basic graphics rather than photographs. Um, now they were also working on improvements to the foreground select tool. And another thing that the development team found was that the, you can do pinch and zoom inside of Windows and I think inside of Linux as well. So now let's talk a little bit about performance. Performance is a big issue for me because I use both GIMP and Photoshop and GIMP has always been just not quite there in terms of performance uh, when it comes to competing with Photoshop. And I like to see whatever improvements in, in, in performance GIMP uh, actually has. The software has got uh, obviously this new GTK3 and a whole bunch of other new stuff coming in that should significantly improve performance. And I've been playing around with the software to see what the improvements is like. And there are a number of filters that I like to use to test performance. Uh, one of them is one uh, th this image here I should mention is huge. This is um, 4,500 pixels by goodness knows what. It is a huge image. We're looking at it at 100% here. And there is a filter. If we go to filters, artistic, and I'm going to choose a filter. And I'm going to shut up for a while because this filter is going to take a couple of seconds to work. And I'm not sure if the voice recording is actually going to be active whilst I'm demonstrating it because it does use up pretty much all of the system resources. Now, when I was using this with GIMP, 2, 2.10, this would freeze the system sometimes for several minutes and sometimes GIMP would crash, even if I was using a much, much smaller image than this guy here. But we're going to try it now and you're going to see the kind of performance that we get. Now bear in mind that there is software running in the background recording uh, the screen and that's going to be using up a lot of resources already. But you and I are going to see now how well this performs now inside of GIMP 3.
realized that was real time and it took about 10 seconds to complete a render that would have taken several minutes or probably crashed GIMP in GIMP 2.10. That's a huge improvement in performance for that particular filter. Another filter that I like to use to measure performance is the Enhance Noise Reduction. Now, GIMP doesn't have the best noise reduction filter in the world, but I do make quite a lot of use, use of this particular filter, if not for noise reduction, for, for other purposes. But it is one which was extremely slow and here it is much, much faster. Um, in the past, I couldn't get this kind of performance at all. Another filter that I use to test the, the, the software for performance is a filter down here, which is called Desaturate Color to Gray. It's a crazy filter, produces this kind of effect. And I love this filter, it's, it's insane. It produces this kind of funky result. Um, I said funky. This result um, is produced with a feature turned on known as OpenCL and it is super fast. It really, um, I mean, I'm going to have to change the settings to just show you how fast it is. It is fast. It's extremely fast. Uh, it's using a, a feature inside of GIMP known as OpenCL. And to understand what that is, we need to go to edit preferences and open up OpenCL. Now in preferences, there's a feature called playground by default turned off. You can't actually access it, I think, by default um, inside of the mature software. It allows you to turn on features that are not stable. So OpenCL was one of the features that was introducing GIMP 2.10. It was initially reasonably stable, but it didn't remain stable. And by GIMP 2.10.22, they turned it off because it was just producing too many problems with some of the new filters. Now I've turned it on because this is the experimental version of GIMP and that was the kind of performance we saw. Now that OpenCL performance is based on the graphics card. I've got a reasonably powerful graphics card and this OpenCL feature uses that powerful graphics card. If I turn this off, then GIMP relies almost entirely on the CPU and the system I'm, I'm working on here does not have a particularly powerful CPU. Uh, let's turn off OpenCL and look at what the performance of that filter that we were working with is like with OpenCL turned, on, turned off. So we'll go there and notice how much slower everything is. So here you can tell there's clearly a kind of a positive to OpenCL, it's so much faster, but the negative there is that it's obviously turned off and the the the, the drivers for OpenCL, they're just not stable enough for GIMP to use. Now, one of the areas where Photoshop really does outperform GIMP is in the use of the uh, GPU. It has all kinds of optimiz optimizations which rely on a decent graphics card. And if you haven't got a decent graphics card, uh, inside of Photoshop, Photoshop will probably work about as well as GIMP. But if you've got a really decent graphics card, you're going to get so, so, so much better a performance uh, in the in the software. Now, GIMP has been improved in such a way, for instance, that if I'm using the uh, curves adjustment tool, this is a huge image. And inside of GIMP 2.10, sometimes when I'm working on images this size, you get a little bit of a delay and you might be seeing a little bit of that inside of um, inside of this software and that's an area where GIMP is kind of weak because it doesn't use the graphics card inside of Photoshop if I was doing this it will be nice and smooth inside of GIMP sometimes we get a little bit of tearing like that um, where you, some of the screen tearing where you get one part of the image updating the other part of the image updating later on. And I think inside of Photoshop, they've designed it so that it actually uses the graphics card. Uh, I've looked at this in terms of the performance and inside of GIMP, it does not use the graphics card at all. But inside of Photoshop, you can get a smoother look and appearance when you're editing with this with this particular filter. Uh, but having said that, I've noticed enormous improvements in the way that this particular filter operates inside of three point uh, inside of the preview version. And I think that's going to be a big bonus when GIMP 3 comes along. And I think this improvement in performance overall 
is probably the thing that I'm liking the most inside of the software. If we go back to the noise reduction filter, it's running a little bit slower without the OpenCL turned on, but it's still, in my view, fairly acceptable in terms of performance. So yeah, can't complain. Uh, let's go to preferences. And let me talk a little bit about the themes. Um, we've got the non-dark version, which is horrible. And we've got the dark version, which on oh, my computer looks fantastic. But we've got horrible colors. We've got this horrible blue color appearing everywhere. And the icons are looking very good. I think one of the main features for GIMP, I'm glad I remember this. One of the main new features for GIMP 3 is the improved user interface when it comes to high DPI displays like this 4K monitor here. This 4K monitor looks fantastic with most of the software that I use. Inside of GIMP, GIMP 2.10, I had to design, I had to redesign the interface so that I can actually record tutorials without the parts of the user interface looking ridiculously small. Uh, and inside of GIMP 3, we haven't got that functionality. I can't figure out how to redesign the user interface. But having said that, the icons do look pretty good. Some of the text is really stupidly small and on a 4K screen, you want it to be uh, customizable. And hopefully that extension management stuff is gonna allow us to download uh, themes. It's changed the appearance of the, uh, of the software and hopefully give us more, more flexibility. And I think people who work on 4K uh, monitors will be able to use the software. I think people working on the new iMac, uh, four and a half K display, 24 inch screen. I think it might actually work on a screen like that. I haven't actually seen anyone using it so far, but it might actually be usable on such a screen. So that if that does uh, emerge as, as an option that you could use GIMP on a, on a high, very, very high DPI uh, display, that would be fantastic. I think that will open up uh, a lot more users to being able to use the software in future. And those of us who are upgrading our monitors, we can continue to use the software. Guys, I think I've been rambling on long enough. We're gonna leave it there. Question of the video, what is your favorite new feature in the software? If you have any favorite new features, what would you like to see if you haven't got any favorite new features? Guys, let's leave it there before my voice gives way. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Uh, till then, take care. Bye.